Hello. My name is Timothy Miller. Um, I'm here to talk about Flexbox, um, but before we jump into that, um, I want to talk a little bit about myself. Um, this is my GitHub account. I'm fairly active. I do a lot of stuff on there. I work for a company called Firespring, which is located in Lincoln. We have a really cool building with a slide, and you're totally welcome to come slide down our slide someday. It's really <laughs> cool. Um, I am TJ of Design on all the social things, and now that you know me, you should definitely go there, LinkedIn, Twitter, anything like that, and connect with me, because I'd love to meet you. Um, with that, Flexbox. Um, Flexbox is layout minus the hacks. It's layout for the web with actually some thought put behind it. Um, I want to kind of get an idea of who I'm talking to. So how many people here have used uh, CSS? Okay, that's good. Um, I was hoping for that. Um, <laughs> second question, who here enjoys using CSS? <laughs> Okay, so that's SAS. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so a lot of a lot of the problems with CSS, in my opinion, and in a lot of people's opinion that I've seen, is the layout, because the layout is terrible, frankly. Um, because what we have to do is we have to rely on tables and floats for our layout. Um, and tables and floats were not made for layout, they were made for tables and Center or putting your image in a spot and having your text float around it. You know, it's 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 not made for actually the complex table layout or the complex layout layouts we use on websites every day. Um, so using floats and tables for layouts is kind of like doing what this guy's doing here, um, and he's got half of the car there. He's, <laughs> he's driving it and he's doing he's it. a great job. You know? And um, it even really looks. Impressive, and he's doing a great job with that. But if you tried to go like from Lincoln to Omaha in this car, you would completely wreck your neck and your back and everything. And this is kind of what we do with layout on the web. It's we've got these things that we use, but they're broken and they break us, and it's it's bad. So flexbox. Um, Flexbox allows a parent to alter its items width and height to best fill the available space, and that's a mouthful. And um, that's the simplest way I could think of to explain it. It's not made for like necessarily a really complex layout. Um, the people who created Flexbox came out with a way to do grid layouts, which is more for, for complicated things. Um, this is simpler, and um, it's really super easy to use. You have a box, which is your parent. You've got other boxes inside of there. Um, the box can be anything, it can be a div or a paragraph or whatever. Um, and you simply tell the parent, I want you to display flex. And you tell the child, flex, you can flex a certain amount. This is, I'm telling it, it can flex one. So here's what that looks like in practice. We've got these three containers here. We've got our parent, which is displaying flex. We've got um, three children that all have a flex value of one. We've actually got a fourth child down here that has a flex value of zero. We can change that to one and it just comes right in there, which is pretty sweet. Um, you don't have to mess with percentages. You don't have to, you don't have to do anything. Flexbox just figures it out for you. Um, the values you use for flex are relative values. They're relative to all the other children within the parent. Um, so. Flexbox says, okay, so in this container, we have a total of three flex units. Um, and then it simply divides um, the total by the single one. So we can also say, give this a flex value of two. And now it sees that there are four flex values within this box. And then it divides four by two, which gives you 50% for this one container. And then it's got 25% for these other containers. Then if we add this one back, it just it just works because um, Flexbox calculates everything and works it all out for you automatically, which is amazing. And there's really no other good way to do this on the web, which is silly because it, it seems simple and trivial. But that's the core of what Flexbox does um, is is that which is 
doesn't seem like that much until you actually start using it. So, it's pretty simple, um, which is good because the web isn't simple as a whole and it needs something simple. So let's look at some more examples here. Um, this is an example of just a basic grid with Flexbox. Um, a lot of people like to work, say, in 12, 12 column gr grids, in which case we just add this up to 12. So this is using like four, four pieces of your grid, and this is using eight pieces of your grid. If you do like six and six, it's going to be 50%, obviously. Or you can do two and 10, and you can just create your whole grid like that and have it, um, and have it with just intuitive values that work well for what you're trying to do. Um, this will make your designer very happy. It's, it comes down to that. It's, it's just really nice and clean and it'll match what he's got in Photoshop. Um, another really great thing about Flexbox is um, not only does it calculate, um, calculate the widths for that, but it also takes into account anything else that's going on with it. So if we've got a margin on this, 16 pixels, we've just got a gutter there. It's, it doesn't matter. Flexbox says, um, hey, there's 16 pixels there, and I'm just going to subtract that from both of the containers. And this is also really cool because um, it's, it equally subtracts it from both containers. So if we put this at 50%, and we have a margin right of like 160 pixels, you can see the containers are still the same width, which is remarkable. Um, we don't have to do something like subtract 80 pixels from the right side of this, and then 80 pixels from the left side of that, like we've had to do in the past. It's just clean and simple, and frankly, Flexbox takes everything you give it and just does what it's supposed to, and Flexbox doesn't care. <laughs> takes it. It's all like that. Yes, sir? How about padding? Is it, uh... Padding? Well, it's handled a little bit differently. It's hard to show with this example because um, we don't have anything inside these containers. They're just empty. Does it do border box? Um, it does. And it's border box is a little bit strange with Flexbox because Flexbox kind of does border box um, by itself. I can show you. If we give this a border, and it just doesn't care. It's, it's Flexbox. It just takes those values and um, adds them and subtracts it from the rest of it. This is actually better than border box in a way because um, border box, if we gave this 200 pixels, it still keeps these containers equal sizes. Whereas border box, it would actually subtract from this other container because the other one is literally taking up more space. So, um, better than border box, I would say, because it's more intuitive, um, but border box has a different purpose. So is Flexbox actually consistent in browser implementations yet? That's a good question. And I actually don't have a slide in here for um, browser support, which is an oversight. Um, but basically, IE10 has an old version of Flexbox. Um, old versions of Firefox and Chrome have it, but they don't really matter so much because they auto-update. So we can really use this if you don't have to support IE9 or down. And you can even support it with IE9 and down if you use a polyfill. Some people like polyfills. I, I do like polyfills for IE9 because, frankly, I don't care if IE9 has a slightly lesser experience. I just if you're on IE9, I really don't care. <laughs> I, I care that it looks okay and is still usable, but I, I don't care. Well, the fallback isn't going to be yeah, that much worse. I mean, if you use no. a polyfill, it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be slower. equally divided. It's going to be slower, and um, it probably won't flex as nicely because Flexbox is made to be responsive. Yeah, and that's fine. Nice. So, yep. Um, for Flexbox, uh, I know it's kind of hard because you don't have any elements inside, but what happens if you have an element that's bigger than the actual box size? Does it? That's a good question, too. Um, so, we should keep going on this into my examples because I get a little more into that. So, um, 
Flexbox still doesn't care. <laughs> Perfect centering is another thing that Flexbox does, which is something that we've waited for for so long. Is you know we can have something inside of a box and Flexbox just calculates the heights and it perfectly centers it. This is still centered because it just keeps it there. It's again something that's been really hard to do in the past, but this is super simple. I'm not going to show you the code because there are a million examples on the internet already because everyone who uses Flexbox has proclaimed the wonders of being able to vertically center things. <laughs> so Google it, you'll find it. Um, here's another example. This is not as much um, what Flexbox is made for because Flexbox is more for like a row of things that flexes. But Flexbox also has an attribute called Flex Wrap, which allows it to wrap individual elements. Um, flex Basis is another attribute that lets you set a width for the Flex containers. So what we've got going on here, let me make it a little taller for you. So what we've got here is the basic layout of a website. It's, we've got a header, this dark gray box, and we've got kind of the body section of the site. We've got a sidebar, and we've got the footer. Um, and how we're doing that is we're telling Flexbox that it can wrap things, and then we're setting this top one to 1,000 pixels. And in this case, because we're using Flex Basis, which is a special um, Flex property, um, if we are below the width of that container, oops, not thousands, so if we're below, it actually takes that width, and these two only have flex units, so it just adds those onto the same row. But if we meet the width of the parent or exceed it, um, then it just takes up the whole parent. It doesn't overflow, like you were asking. You can, um, you can actually change this so it uses the width. And will this work? No, it won't. OK. Well. You can exceed the boundaries um, of a flex parent container, um, but I don't have a really good example of that off the top of my head. Um, I've done it, I just don't remember how. So um, I brought this, this example up because it's kind of a, a practical use case because everyone who has ever made a website has um, done this same layout where you've got a header and a footer and the body and the sidebar. And it's just super simple and we can do it with Flexbox with literally 20 lines of CSS, which is remarkable. And it's tiny and it's clean and um, we can add any sort of borders or margins or padding or anything we want to to this without worrying about this sidebar breaking and jumping down here. And also, um, thinking like responsively and changing this to work on mobile. Um, it also makes that really easy because when you squeeze the size of your browser to a certain point, you just give this sidebar um, that same flex basis value of whatever you want to and it just jumps right down and everything still fits and everything still works and your layout isn't busted because of one lousy margin that you forgot to reset or you know something like that. Um, so that's um, Flexbox. There's a whole lot more that goes into Flexbox. There are um, probably like eight different CSS attributes that I didn't get into because it's a five minute talk and I could talk for 45 minutes about this easily. Um, so to sum up, Flexbox is fun. It's cool. Um, and it's really useful for a ton of different things. Um, so use it. That's it. If you want to see my slide deck again, um, it's here. You can look at it. Um, if you want some, you know, animated gifs or gifs, depending on, you know, whatever. Um, it's a gift. Um, so yeah. Otherwise, Flexbox. You can Google it. And tons of things. So there you go. I have a question. Question. Okay. Is Flexbox smart enough to make your child lives the same height, or is that something that you put in? That is another attribute that I didn't get into. Um, well, in this case, 
I set the height explicitly to 33%. If I hadn't done that, <laughs> weird things happen, apparently. Um, uh, I'm doing really strange things here. Um, so, if I hadn't done this and set that height, um, then it just assumes 100% height automatically. And there are also things that you can do that I haven't mentioned, which is you can um, I need my cheat sheet, but I don't have it. Um, flex column? No, it's not column. So the way it's working right now is it's horizontal. It's everything is going horizontally and it's wrapping horizontally. Um, there is an attribute that you set on the parent that makes it that switches that and everything goes vertically and wraps vertically, um, which is useful. It's slightly yet less useful, which is why I didn't include it in here because if you're actually going to use this stuff, it's not that hard to understand. And I just wanted to, um, I just wanted to, kind of get the bug into your head without having to go through everything since it's a five minute talk. Um, so the answer is yes, you can do that. Um, and it's easy and all the same advantages apply to doing that as this. Cool. Any more questions? Good, thank you.